What up guys, Seanak Petwardhan here from Connie's Arts and welcome to another tutorial. This isn't really a regular tutorial but more of a tips video since I'm not creating any effects but just explaining some tricks in After Effects that can probably speed your workflow. You might already know these or might not depending on the level of expertise you have with After Effects. I don't know what brought this on to be honest but one day I double clicked on the selection tool and the layer scale just reset itself. And then I started double clicking everywhere in the software. I double click here, I double click there, here click, there click, everywhere double click. And hit upon some interesting things. And old Max Shanak had an idea make a video. So here it is, let's go. Alright, so I've made this project in After Effects and it's just two boxes with a background. I wanted to keep things simple, so... Okay, the first tool is Selection Tool, right here. Now, this tool, if you double click on the Selection Tool, it resets the scale of a selected layer to its default value, which is 100%. So if I have a layer and I change the scale value of this layer to anything which is not the default value, and if you double click on the selection tool, the scale property is reset to 100%. Uh, but if the layer is not selected, nothing will happen. It doesn't do anything. The next tool is the hand tool. If I... Uh, okay, to explain this, uh, let's just scale the composition. Now, if I double click on the hand tool, it fits the composition window to the closest value that it can it can get in this uh, magnification pop-up remember that it does not fit the window to the boundaries of your composition window it only resets it to one of these values which is the closest to your current setup now I haven't checked it on different monitors, the value might change according to the resolution. So if you have a 4K monitor, the zoom might change, so I'm not sure if it does. Let me know in the comments section below. Next is the zoom tool. If you have the composition window selected, okay, the zoom tool resets your composition to 100%. And it also centers the composition, so if you have, if you have moved the composition to some other area and this can happen at times that your composition is completely outside of the frame and you have no idea where to find it. You can just double click on the zoom tool to center the composition to your view. Alright, next is the rotation tool. You might have already guessed it. If the rotation of your layer is at a non-default value, which is zero, the default is zero, uh, the rotation tool resets it to its default value. This also works for 3D layers by the way, so if you have a 3D layer and you have messed up the rotation and the orientation, it resets itself to zero, all of it. Next tool is the pan behind tool. The keyboard shortcut for this tool is Y. Now to explain this tool a little better, I am going to create a mask on the green solid. Let's just quickly create a mask don't need it to be anything fancy but I'm going to change this to none and change the mask color to black so that it's visible properly and I'm going to off center this a little bit I'll explain the reason why in a few minutes I don't want the mask to be in the center now if I press Y on my keyboard to activate the pan behind tool and if I select the anchor point and move it away from its default value, you already see where I'm going with this, but there are a few tricks with this tool. Now, if I double click, the position of the layer resets itself in such a way that the anchor point is at the default position, but the layer is at the position of the anchor point, if you can understand what I'm trying to say. Now, if I have the mask on, and if I double click on the pan behind tool nothing happens but now let me just control Z this uh, let me just undo this now if I press control on my keyboard 
and double click on the pan behind tool, the anchor point shifts to the center of the layer. So the layer doesn't change, the position of the layer doesn't change from whatever position this is. But the position of the anchor point snaps to the center of the layer. Now if I again change the mask to add, and if I again do the same thing, control and double click the pan behind tool, the anchor point jumps to the center of this mask. So basically if I press control and double click the pan behind tool, the anchor point moves to the center of the bounding box of a layer. If the layer, if this is on none, it'll jump, control, double click to make the mask, uh, to make the anchor point jump to the center of the layer. If the mask is selected, it will jump to the center of the bounding box. Remember that it is not moving to the center of the mask. It is only moving to the center of the bounding box of the mask. All right, let's remove the mask because we don't need it anymore. And let's again change the anchor point. Press Y on your keyboard to activate the pan behind tool and change it. If I alt and double click on this tool, the anchor point and the position of the layer both are reset to their default values. If you go in this transform property, you will see that the position is at 960 by 540 since this composition is 1920 by 1080 and the anchor point is at 250 by 250 since the solid is 500 by 500. So this is at the center of the composition as well as the center of the screen solid. So that was the pan behind tool. All right, so if you think about it, just with the selection tool, the rotation tool, and the pan behind tool, you can use it to reset your animations of a layer. For example, if you go to the transform properties of a layer, and if you have probably changed the position and the rotation and the scale, by the way, the keyboard shortcuts for each of these for the selection tool is V, for the rotation tool it's W, and for the pan behind tool it's Y. So that would make things easier for you, faster. And uh, now if you wanted to change the this layer to its default value, mind you that it will not reset to its original position in which I had positioned it somewhere over here but it will position itself to the default values of After Effects. So basically, if I wanted to animate it in such a way that it resets itself, I can just double click on the Selection tool to reset the scale, double click on the Rotation tool to reset the rotation, and I'll have to Alt and double click on the Pan Behind tool to reset the position to the center of the composition. Just something to keep in mind maybe something when you're animating this stuff so yeah okay the next tool is a shape tool or the rectangle tool or whatever you can call it because it's full of shapes now this tool works again this tool has a few tricks that you can work with if there's nothing selected in your composition or anywhere else and if you double click on the rectangle tool it creates a shape that fills the entire area with the rectangle. So the size of this rectangle is equal to the size of the composition. Same thing goes with masks. However, if your layer is smaller than the composition, and if you double click on the tool, it creates a mask which is extended to the sides of this layer instead of the composition. If your solid itself is 1920 by 1080 it will create the same size as your solid layer. I'll just give you a tip. This, this trick doesn't work with text layers. So if you have a text layer, let's call it Conius. And now if I wanted to create a mask which is equal to the uh, you know size of this layer, that won't work. If I double click on this, it will still create a mask which is size which is the size of the composition which is 1920 by 1080 for some reason text bounding boxes aren't really set in the same way that the ones of say a solid layer are 
so the mask kind of resets to the size of the composition instead. I'm just gonna delete the text layer which I, because I don't need it. Now this can get interesting because okay if you have another tool selected maybe the polygon tool or something or the star tool and if you double click on it it is also created in such a way that the center of whichever uh, shape that you're going for it will always be at the center of the composition so ideally if I wanted to have this tool extend to the boundaries something like this where the bounding box is kind of coinciding with the boundaries of the composition that won't happen this tool always creates the shapes in such a way that the anchor point will always be at the center of the layer just something to keep in mind and this works with everything this if i have the solid selected and if i go with the star it will create the star in such a way that the center of the anchor point of the star will be the same as the anchor point of this layer. Also, as a last tip in this tool, alt clicking kind of toggles between the shapes. So if you have a mask or something that you want to go for, you can just alt click and it'll keep rotating between the five tools that are there by default in this so that was the shape tool next tool is the text tool double clicking on the text tool if you have a composition selected double clicking on the text tool just creates a new text layer same goes with the vertical text type tool it creates a vertical text layer I'm just gonna delete these text layers all right, so that was the toolbar and the stuff that you can do by double clicking on the toolbar. Let's proceed to the other parts of the interface. Let's start with the project window first. Double clicking on these, just open them up. Uh, double clicking also closes them. And if you want to import any footage, and if you don't want to go through file, import, and all that file, explorer, and all that stuff, you can just double click in the empty area and import whatever footage you're looking to import and of course as you might already know double clicking on a footage opens it up in the footage view panel now if you import a footage in your composition and if you want to add any effects on it you can just go to the effects and presets and for example if i want to add a color correction effect on it maybe levels instead of going all the way through effects maybe select the layer Instead of going all the way through effects and all doing all of this, you can just type in whichever effect that you're looking for, maybe levels. And if you double click here, effect gets added to your composition and you can change it to whatever you wish. All right, now coming to the timeline. Uh, okay, I'm just going to collapse this a little bit. I don't need those extra properties. Now these two bars that you see here, the upper one, this is called the time navigator bar. This is the actual area that you're working on at the moment and you can use it to zoom in and out of your timeline. Sometimes the compositions can be really long and it can get tedious to go through all of it and you cannot actually move to the exact frame if there are like, if the composition is more than, I don't know, one, two minutes. And so you need this to zoom in and out of your work area. And the second bar, this work area bar, this is the part of your composition that will actually get rendered if you adjust it to whatever duration you need and hit the render button. Double clicking on this work area resets the work area to the full length of the composition. Double clicking on the time navigator bar zooms it in to its lowest value, like it cannot zoom in further than this point. And if you shift click on the navigator bar, that also resets itself to the full length of the composition. And at the very end of this, if you double click on any of these layers, you open them up in their source windows. If you have maybe properties on the layer, 
double clicking on them will open the properties of the layer. Alrighty guys, that's the end of my list, but hey, if you know of something that you can do by double clicking in After Effects that I might have missed out on this one, let me know that in the comments section so others can also see it and I don't know, bless you for it. I'll bless you for it. You might know something that I don't, I might know something that you don't, oh, but actually that's not the case. I already told you the things that I know. So it's just the earlier part where someone else might not know the stuff that you know. All right, I'll just stop here. But hey, before you move on to your stuff, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, join, tweet, all that good stuff. Also do hit the notification button so you will receive an update when I upload my videos. For now, Seanak over and out.